You are listening to the Mark Guzman Podcast Experience. With an extensive background in the media management industry, Melody Mills specializes in introducing small businesses into the wide world of digital marketing. Based out of Canada, Melody started her own digital marketing firm back in 2015, turning what was once a side gig into a full-on career. This is not an episode you will want to miss. I am recording now, I and I want to thank you for now. being a guest. You are the first yeah. international guest that we have on the podcast. So thank you very much. I feel blessed. <laughs> thank you for having me. Now, I know. Yeah, it's a pleasure. Yeah, of course. And I know usually we do a beer wine tasting on the show, and you had a great mm-hmm. idea is that we can still do the same thing, except you're going to have a Canadian wine, and I'm going to have an American wine. Yeah, exactly. You know, I think that's so crazy that I searched all those liquor stores in your area and there's no Canadian wines there. But I guess it makes sense because being in California, you know, you guys are like the kingpin of good wines. So you don't need any of those little Canadian wines coming down your way. (laughs) But I am on a mission to find various wines around the world. So Okay, cool. Yeah. So why don't you tell me what is the current wine that you have in front of you? Okay, yeah. I have, it's called, it has kind of a funny name. It's called Blasted Church, and that's the name of the winery. And then the wine that I'm having right now is called Hat, Hat Field Fuse. Um, it's a bit of a It's from a region called the Okanagan Valley, which is really, really popular here in BC and neighboring provinces. It's kind of, when you visit the Okanagan Valley, it's kind of reminiscent of Napa Valley, Sonoma Valley, and um, you almost, at some points, almost feel like you're in a vineyard in Italy when you're there. It's really beautiful. So you can see with my glass of wine, it's a nice, uh, it's not too yellow. It's not, it's more of a, it has almost more of like a Sauvignon Blanc look to it than like a oaky Chardonnay. Okay, nice. Yeah. And so, um, you know what? Let me talk a little bit about my wine now. And yes, so please. the wine that I have here, and let me put it into the frame shot. Um, it's actually Chimney Rock. I don't know. Have you heard of them? Before? Chimney Rock. Yeah. Let me get that mm. closer. Yeah. So yeah. Look, yeah uh, I have not seen that before. You have not seen that before? You said? Yeah. Okay. Oh, I haven't seen it before. Yeah. So mm. they're out of Napa. Um, it's a cab wine. Um, it's probably one of my favorite wineries. So if you're ever in Napa, make sure to uh, swing by their winery. Um, I will. Yeah, really delicious. And have you ever been to Napa Valley? Um, I visited Sonoma when I was uh, had a friend that lived in San Francisco for a few years. So okay. I came down and visited San Francisco a few times. And one of the things that we did was we went out there and did a little wine tour. And yeah, it was just so beautiful yeah. so perfect there yeah yeah so for sure you're you'll have to, to come have back. That in your backyard yeah 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 i will <laughs> yeah i'll come and i'll drop you off a bottle of wine okay sounds good so yeah. <laughs> we met in a very interesting way and yes. it was completely online and i follow gary yeah. vaynerchuk so do you mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. huge fans of him and he he's a big proponent of his community and basically uh, meeting other people within the community and trying to collaborate in some way. And you and I both kind of put our businesses out there and that's really how we met. And that was just yeah, la- last exactly. week, right? Yeah. It's been a whirlwind of a week. Um, yeah. I mean, I, when I commented on that status, I was really just speaking from a point of view of, to say a little bit about myself. I didn't even really think anyone was going to reply to it or read it. Um, it. It was a very short paragraph. Um, but then, you know, networked with you. I networked with a website developer out of Iowa off of that thread. Okay. And then I had another um, gentleman with a photography business reach out to me. And, and several other people reached out as well, but the kind of, you know, three top three, I guess, where you and those two other people. And so here we are. Yeah. Isn't that cool? (laughs) Yeah, it is. It is. I mean, it's amazing, like, technology nowadays and the internet, what you can do. Obviously, there's glitches like us trying to get this Google Hangout going, but 
you know, there are other ways to mm. do it and to collaborate with people around the world. It's, it's become so simple. Now, um, yeah. your story was very interesting because you have a digital media agency. So give us a little mm. bit of background on how you got into that field. Sure. Um, you know, like I, I kind of have it on my website. I made my side hustle, my main hustle, kind of a play on uh, urban dictionary words there. Um, I found I was always taking on the roles as the social media manager in um, past jobs that I've had. And so in 2015, I had like a little bit of a rocky year career wise. I really put myself out there and I tried to, I was recruited for this position in, in a city called Edmonton, Alberta. It didn't work out. And so I was feeling like pretty down, like low self-esteem. And I just kind of felt, had a little pity party for a couple of days. And then after that, I was like, you know what, I'm just going to make it work. And I'm going to, I love doing social media. I'm passionate about it. I'm going to find businesses that want to hire me just to do that. I don't want to do admin or um, janitorial duties or any other lame things that I can think of. I just want to do that. And I feel like I'm good enough that people will pay me to do just that for them. So went out and, and started it up. Um, I didn't even have a computer at the time, actually. I was working out of the public library, which was a couple blocks from my house. Wow. Talk about and, hustle um, there. That's straight yeah. hustle. Yeah, it was straight hustle. I mean, I would go to the library for hours at a time, set up shop, um, and, and just, you know, in the back of my head, I thought, this is crazy. I don't even have a computer, and I'm marketing myself as a digital media manager. But I knew what I could do as soon as I got that first paycheck and I could afford to get a laptop. And, you know, a client took a chance on me, and, and here I am two years later, and I just the work coming in yeah steady so yeah that's awesome that's a great story yeah. that's a great story thank you so how big are you as a company right now are you solo do you have um, staff right, yeah right now i'm pretty small still considering the size of some agencies that are out there um i don't have any staff per se but i do have freelancers that are kind of like my partners okay so i treat them like here's your specialty your specialty is copywriting your specialty is website design and your specialty is graphic design so like i'm only going to come to you for those things and those people all have their full-time jobs whether it be their own businesses or a company that they're working at but we have kind of a deal where if i need you to do this like can you get it done within a small very small time period and yeah it's working out really well that way um Definitely a goal of mine is to hire someone full time though, because getting busy for me. But um, yeah, goals, you know, yeah. goals span. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, what were some of the early hurdles you had to clear besides, you know, not having a laptop or a computer to work on? Yeah, I mean, those were some of the biggest hurdles. Um, just getting the self confidence up to try something out on your own was a huge hurdle. Um, you know, like I said, I was kind of feeling down and I was thinking, okay, can I even like, can I even start my own business? And so that was the, almost the hurdle is when you come into ob just tiny obstacles, when you're first starting out, you, you have to really push past them and you, you have to think, I'm going to figure this out, you know, and, and especially when you start something all by yourself, you don't really have anyone to bounce ideas off of. And, um, you don't, all the creativity is stemming just from yourself. So there's definitely days where you're like tired, exhausted, you can't think of anything new and you have to just shut down for that day and then try at it the next day. So those have been things that were kind of slowing me down at the beginning, but we've definitely gotten past them now. And um, not having a computer <laughs> was probably the <laughs> biggest hurdle. <laughs> but I, you know, it's, you get to the public library and it's actually a great place to work. So I really can't even complain about that. But, and I would um, imagine these days there's not many people inside public libraries. So it's very quiet, right? <laughs> there's certain types of people that were there. Yeah. And they can be pretty distracting. 
mostly no. The general population <laughs> mostly has <laughs> an iPad, a phone, a uh, computer, or something. So, yeah, it was a funny. It was a really funny place to be in at the time. And me and my, uh, you know, I was renting a room from a friend at the time, and we would have hilarious laughs about it when I would come back and say, "Oh, this person was sitting beside me at the library today as I was together a business proposal." <laughs> So it was funny. Yeah. And how many clients did you propose to in order to get that one? Yes. In order to get your first paycheck. Was it many or were you lucky in that? Um, 10 to 15. 10 to 15. Okay. That's pretty good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's difficult when you approach someone saying like, I can do this for you. And they say, well, who's, who, what, who, can you show me something you've done? And you're like, uh, Yeah. This is when I worked for this company and I was just managing their social media page. And, and yeah, I just, I had a client. They're now my client. I met with them and um, they're a truck company out of Edmonton. And they, they gave me that chance. You know, they said, I asked them about a year later. I said, how many people did you interview for th that kind of job or position? And, and Bernard, the owner said, well, we interviewed about three different people, but he's like, your, your excitement over what you do. He's like, it really showed me that you were going to be bringing lots of ideas to the table and you're the right fit for the, for the role. So, and what did you end up doing? And, yeah. Okay. And what did you end up doing for them? Um, media wise, was it social marketing? We started off. Yeah, we started off. Um, I don't do any print marketing. Um, I just leave that to the printing professionals, but, um, we started off just kind of a, a basic package so I was um, managing their Facebook page um, creating a page for them on LinkedIn because I don't think they even had one on LinkedIn and um, so the, the contract was LinkedIn Facebook Twitter okay so it was uh, just a and I tr and I made sure I charged like bottom bottom line you know I, I wasn't overcharging anything by any means and um, so once that started getting built up, that's when we added in company blog. Um, now I kind of manage everything digital for them. So if there's uh, there's a Yelp account and there's Google reviews and there's, um, I mean, the list goes on how many different little places that your business is online that you, you might not even have signed up for, but your business is still on there online. So I just make sure their whole enterprise digitally is taken care of. Yeah. Sounds good. Now, do you focus on small, mm -hmm. medium, large businesses right now? Like who's mainly your clientele? Um, I mean, I'll go after anyone, but uh, I really do enjoy doing business with small businesses because then it's uh, business owner to business owner and the decisions get made a lot quicker. Um, I find that I have, I have so many ideas all the time and I'm so excited about the possibility especially when I meet someone that they have a product that I really believe in or they have a business model that I just think, Oh my gosh, that's going to explode. If we do your marketing this way, then when I'm really talking to the owner, I get that passion back from them. And that's when we really create something special. Um, sometimes when you work with someone that's been doing their job a long time and maybe they don't have any profit sharing, they're not an owner, they might not have the same, enthusiasm to really get a ball rolling creatively online or anything yep. like that. So yeah, I, I do prefer small businesses because there's something really satisfying about someone starting it off small and, and watching them grow. Yeah. Much like your own business and much like my business and yeah, what I've done. I mean, it's very satisfying when it's, when it's something that you've built yourself and obviously every business needs a, an entire team. And so it, it's awesome. Now, um, seeking out small businesses, are, are there any specific industries that you specialize in or that you just enjoy working with? <laughs> yeah. Um, I was specializing in the oil and gas industry because, um, where I started my business is Alberta, which is kind of, I don't know if you've heard of Alberta, but it's kind of like the Texas of Canada. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, you know, it's got it's really it's world renowned for its beef industry and um there's a lot of oil and gas okay it is texas so, of canada 
Yeah, exactly. Um, so back about three years ago now, uh, Alberta hit a pretty bad recession when the price of oil fell. Um, it, it was just awful. Thousands of people getting laid off, um, businesses losing contracts left, right and center, big oil p- companies pulling out of projects. And so I saw a need where all these businesses were flourishing so steady before that they never had to really even think about marketing. All of a sudden they had to now think about diversifying. They had to think about marketing their business. They had to think about how to attract customers because they were so used to saying, we're so busy. Maybe we can do that in six months. We don't know. So that was where I really started to hone in on and focus in on. Um, I felt like, okay, I I can help you guys. You know, this is a tough time, but through some, really strategic marketing we can get out of this and and i'm here i can help you guys so i was really focusing on that um my business has organically shifted towards real estate actually really um yeah i really really love um working in with real estate industry i find it fascinating all the different things you can do as uh if whether you're just buying your first home or whether you do flipping or anything like that i mean the potential for digital media advertising with the real estate industry right now is crazy there's so much you can do so i'm heading that way okay great now now would you mm-hmm. recommend for companies and small businesses to have someone in-house to handle their digital media or do you recommend for them to outsource it yeah, I think you'd probably expect me to say as an agency owner, like everyone better outsource it, right? Agency, but, <laughs> <laughs> but I will say that because it really is dependent on what you're selling and what your business is. Um, there's definitely some huge benefits, financial benefits to hiring an agency because you're just paying for certain services and you're not paying. Uh, I'm not sure if it works the same in the states, but if you have an employee here in Canada, you're paying. Um, insurance. You're it, when they're taking six days, it's costing the company money. They're taking vacation time, which I'm all for. But I'm just saying, from a business perspective, you save a substantial amount of money as a business owner if you're hiring a freelancer or an agency to do your digital media, as opposed to hiring an in-house. Now, if you have the type of business that, um let's say it's a sports stadium. Um, let's say the LA Dodgers. Okay. Is that right? <laughs> <They're>, uh, <laughs> Is that a team? <laughs> uh, yeah, LA Dodgers are a team. They're in uh, Southern California. <laughs> oh, okay, that's right. You're San Francisco. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so, San yeah. Francisco 49ers. Let's say okay. they have, um, uh, well, they obviously do have a digital media department it would be wise for a place like that to not hire it out and to have in-house because there's probably so much happening in that stadium that it'd be always wanting someone be in there taking Facebook live videos, taking pictures, updating on the game. I mean, that's the type of thing where I would seriously suggest to them just hire in-house and that way you can have that person at your disposal 24 hours a day because that's probably what you need. Yeah. Now, are most of your clients Mm -hmm. locally or do you work with international clients? I don't have any international clients yet. Um, I almost did because I have my services up on a couple um, portals. Have you ever heard of like Upwork or Fiverr or anything yeah. like that? Yeah, I just hired okay, someone so to redesign my brochure through Upwork. You did? No, sorry. <laughs> um, that's good. That's good. I hope they do a good job. If they don't, you have my number. Um, so, yeah, there's there's potential to get some small international jobs there. I don't currently have any international clients, but being in Canada really doesn't have any effect on digital media or um, a client in the States hiring me. There's really no boundaries or borders online. So um, actually it would be wise for someone with a company in the States to hire someone in Canada because your dollar gets stretched quite further. Okay. So yeah, I think it's like the Canadian dollar is like 80 cents right now or something like that. So Okay. Okay. So yeah. f- so for 
a business that might be here in the States that wants to hire your company, how would that relationship work in terms of um, getting content created, getting content over to you and getting it published? It would be just like what we're doing right now. So we'd have a Skype video chat um, because you go through the process when you're onboarding a new client. And one of the processes that I go through is called the discovery session. So we sit down and we chit chat for, for a little while getting to know each other. And then we really get into the nitty gritty about your bio and what your business is about and how did you start it and why did you start it and all these things. And that can all be done over Skype or Google Hangout or FaceTime whichever one the client is most comfortable with. And then as far as sending content over, um, I usually do most of that just through email. Um, some clients have my te- cell phone number and they just text me stuff. When, when they, it comes to their mind, they just text it on over and I put it in their file. So, yeah, it, it's, really, it's really, really accessible these days. And the, it's, it's so, super exciting to see the e-commerce happening all around the world because so much can be done um, remotely these days. Yeah. Okay. So let's jump Mm -hmm. into some advice that we can give uh, people listening to the podcast or even viewing the podcast. And number one on the top of everyone's list should be what? You mean like which digital Digital. platform to be on? Uh, Yeah. Let's start with digital platform and then we can start and then we can switch it over to, what type of number one content they should be putting out there? Well, something I say to everyone is you must have a website and you must have a Facebook page. Unless you are grandma knitting things just to sell on Etsy in your living room, then yeah, you could probably get by with just having a Facebook page. But if you really want to be taken seriously as a leader in your industry or as a you know, a legitimate business, you should have both a website and a Facebook page. Um, Secondly, as far as like the must have content for, for your Facebook page or anything, it should always be authentic because I am like number one against spamming, spamming the airwaves out there. If you're not going to be putting up stuff that's authentic and telling your story, then just don't put up anything at all. Yeah. Don't try to follow these rules where you're, oh, I have to post five times a day or, yeah, I have to get this new stuff out a week. Like, just stop. If you only have two good things per week to put out there, then that's all you do. Because it's getting too much. People are putting out too much. And everyone thinks they're going to be the next Gary Vaynerchuk or Tony Robbins or whoever, and they're just, like, vomiting online, basically. And it's, Okay, let's just slow it down. Let's back it up. If you don't have anything authentic or... Um, it has to be a value. Is it going to Is it gonna be a value? Then just, just stop and, and reassess what you're doing. Okay. Now, why don't you define what authentic content or content of value would be for clients? Yeah. All you, all you really have to do is think about um, who, who am I speaking to? Okay, so that's the biggest thing is people ask, can you get me this many followers or what, what channel do you think I should be on? Should I be on Pinterest? Should I be on LinkedIn? Should I be on Twitter? Well, let's figure out who you're talking to first. So for you, for your real estate in the um, Bay area. So who are you talking to? Well, we're probably talking to people that um, single family buyers, first home buyers. um, So we're going to figure out where they're hanging out, where are they hanging out? Mostly everyone's hanging out on Facebook. If you wanted to hone in your market and deliver to women age 25 to 50, then we'd probably create a Pinterest profile. If you um, really want to speak to millennials, then we'd probably get you on Snapchat. So there's all the different places that we figure out exactly where we want to be. And then we figure out how to speak to them. And then that's when we start curating our content. So it, it is curated, right? Like it, it's not, we are thinking about who we're speaking about too but we're thinking about what what problem are we solving for our listeners and then that's when we offer the advice or we offer the answers okay and if you if you don't have that figured out quite yet then that's kind of what you need to hone in on to figure out what you should be producing okay now how involved are your clients Mm -hmm. 
in producing this content do you do you take full control hire freelancers and get everything done for them or do you expect your clients to at least you know get the videos recorded send them to you that sort of thing um i'd say i'm pretty involved um i like to be pretty involved i like to have close relationships with my clients because i feel like if i don't have those close relationships then how am i going to be speaking on their behalf so i'm pretty involved i'm i'm keeping in touch regularly and um i do i do ask them though um if there's an event happening that i can't be at i contact that client and I say who within your company can do take some pictures but can we can we put the task on one person so I know it's going to get done and then I like to talk to that person in particular and I say can you make sure you get pictures with the branding in the background pictures of people pictures of people are the best so if you can make sure you get some pictures of people get that in there so yeah I say I'm, I'm pretty pretty close with my clients and I um I don't know. We should ask them. Maybe I'll do a <laughs> poll on my Facebook page. I'll be like, <laughs> do <laughs> I go. ask too much of you guys? Here's a poll. Yes, no, sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> now, do you have clients that ever try to micromanage like what you do and try to correct you? And, you know, those clients that will seem to know more than you do? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're out there. They're out there. Um, you have to put those people in their place right away. Yeah. So basically yeah. like in any business where your client or customer tries to micromanage or tell you what to do, you have to, I mean, and I assume after a while you hone in your skills on identifying those people and you make a decision pretty fast as to whether you want to work with them or not, or refer, yeah. or what I do is I refer them out to other agents. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great idea. Um, <laughs> I, you know how you asked me what some hurdles were at the beginning? Mm -hmm. I'd say that was a hurdle was, um, knowing like where I can really put down my boundaries. And so that's something I figured out along the way is that when someone's nickel and diming you like right from the get go, then you're going to be dealing with kind of that, that hassle type client, the whole relationship. Um, and in a way, like, social media managing and stuff like that is actually pretty personal because I have to believe in what you're doing and your brand in order to like take your information, digest it and spit it out back onto your Facebook page and stuff like that. I have to actually believe in your brand. So I, I, yeah, I mean, if someone's really hassling you, micromanaging you and it's becoming negative, I would actually suggest to, to refer that person to someone else and, or if you could sit down and have a positive relationship where you could say, this is what I need from you in order to do my job well, and they agree to it, then you've negotiated that and you can move forward. Yeah. And I'm glad you, someone, yeah, and I'm glad yeah, you said um, something just a few seconds ago of how you dive into their business, your client's business. You have to know everything about their business and believe what they do to put it back out mm -hmm. there because many people think hiring a media agency is simply about, Oh, well, they're going to post my content up there. Maybe that's something I mm -hmm. can do, but it, it's much more than that. And many people, you know, when it comes down to actual content of value for customers, I mean, I see in the real estate industry where you have a lot of realtors that will share links, you know, they share links to Zillow realtor.com or other real estate websites they're not really creating content or showing people who they are and building mm -hmm. those connections. So, mm -hmm. so I, I think when hiring a media agency, that's one of the very key things to look at is, are they going to get to know who you are and are they going to mimic mm -hmm. you online? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I'd be pretty worried if, if you are a business owner um, and you meet with a media agency and they don't really take that much information from you or show, show a lot of interest in, in who you are and, and how you started your business and what your mission statement is and what your vision is. Yeah. I, I don't think that's the right agency for you then. And I think then maybe they're just looking to make a quick buck off you because like one of the first things I did with my first client is, um, 
the owner of the trucking trucking company and we sat down and I asked, well, what what's your life story? How did you get here? Who are you? And I got his whole life story. And from, from there, I can really brand his company because his story is so interesting and so reflective who he is and how he started his business. Hey, yes, it's a tracking company. They do freight and stuff like that. But there's more to it than that and how he runs his business and the community communities that he um, affects solely with his um, like his volunteering and his giving back, donating money from the company to the communities. That's part of who he is as a person. And so I, I interweb all of that and I tell that story constantly through social media and through their website and, and through radio ads and stuff like that. We're constantly telling that story because that's the true story. Yeah. So, and, and people want to know your story. I can't stress that enough. They want to know your story. So tell it. Yeah. And I think reality TV, when that really started, I want to say really in the eighties with some shows, I think that's proven, yeah. <laughs> that's proven that us as humans want to watch other people's lives. Yeah. <laughs> but I think there's way yes. more interesting stuff online right now than actually on cable networks. So, um, <laughs> now it depends what you're into. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're talking to like the world's number one bachelor fan right now. So, like. <laughs> Now, you mentioned something very interesting a few minutes ago, Pinterest. Now, mm -hmm. I think it's funny that you mentioned Pinterest because when I look at my stats, 75% of my followers on Facebook right now are women. So, like, the majority of my business is property management. Um, and I do some sales here and there, but the majority is property management. And okay. what I've seen the trend is is that when it comes to finding a home, usually the guy is just like whatever she wants you know we'll figure it out yeah. and you know whatever she wants and so it seems like uh the females take more charge in trying to find rentals and they found my page and i post rentals and properties on my website and so 75 mm -hmm. percent are women that are followers and i know pinterest is majority women correct mm -hmm. yeah Mm -hmm. So how would a real estate agent or even a property manager be able to then, because I have no presence on Pinterest right now, how would I be able to create a presence and maybe combine all the marketing together? Well, here's a question. What do you think those women want? Like, what are they mostly looking for in a place? You know, that's you a know? good question. Like, do they... Do they usually go, and this is going to come across extremely sexist, but I, it's okay because I'm a woman, I can say it. <laughs> they probably are interested, <laughs> they're probably interested in the kitchen. Because when you walk into a house and the kitchen is crummy, dirty, if it's a rental property, right? Like this small, you don't really want to be in there. Like, how are you going to go in there and, and really like cook a nice, you, you don't want to spend a lot of time in there, right? So, you know, women get, women just naturally have like a nesting side to them. So what I would say to you is, and if we were, do, if we were really getting down to the nitty gritty of it, I'd be like, look, women want like a nice nest. They want a nice kitchen. So why don't we showcase that on your Pinterest page? So we're going to create a Pinterest page, knowing that most of your audience is women and we're not going to pretend to be something you're not, but we're going to showcase what we think that they're probably super interested in. So if we're going to, if we're going to be showing a bunch of your rental properties, we're going to get some professionally done pictures and we're going to stage it. We're going to show like nice little, just bring in some props or whatever, a few candles, bring in some warmth, make it look like there's a little bit of life to the home because men can be a little bit bare bones. So you just got to figure out how to talk to those women and what they're looking for and, and what they want. We put up the Pinterest page for you and they might not even be like repinning it, but they'll definitely see it on their feed because it'll be along the same things that they're already interested in. And that's how all those algorithms work, which is a whole other topic. <laughs> it is. Okay. So that makes a lot of sense. That makes a lot of sense and very good advice. Um, and that's the one thing that I do feel bad about doing because 
I haven't set up a Pinterest page and I know I should, I just haven't had the time to do it. So I think you and I are going to be talking after this podcast um, because I am going to need some help putting that stuff together. Mm -hmm. Um, So what are some of the things that you look for in a client's social media pages um, when you're first onboarding them as a client? Well, no, like if they haven't really spent a lot of time on their, on their Facebook page, if they don't even have an Instagram account, like that doesn't face me at all. It's, it's more so seeing what their business has to offer that I can showcase for them. But on the flip side, if I, I have been contacted, <laughs> one time I was contacted, um, this guy from Texas contacted me and said, I want 20,000 followers. Can you do that for me? And it's like immediately like, no, like, no, if that's, if that's the only thing that you're thinking that you want then no, I'm automatically, no, I will not sign up to do that for you because you should want so much more than just 20,000 followers or this many followers. It should be like, I want people to see what I'm making and what I'm doing. And I think that if I show them online, they might call me, they might visit me at my store. They might visit my website. So that that's something that I definitely look for in a client. And I mean, yeah, I'll look at your pages before I sign up to work with you, obviously. But it's if you didn't have a dedicated social media manager before and it was kind of just you on the side doing doing what you thought was possible, that wouldn't phase me. Like if it was awful, it wouldn't phase me at all. I'd be like, it's okay. We're going to start fresh, you know, we're going to build your followers up. It's okay. We got this. So, Yeah. And there's a yeah. big misconception with uh, trying to gain so many followers. You know, it's, it's funny. Like yeah. I meet so many people that are always worried about building a huge following or they don't start because they, they tell themselves, I only have one or 200 followers and that's all I, I have. know, you know, and and then when you look at certain pages that might have 10, 15, 20,000 or one or 2 million, you know, many people think you need those kind of numbers to get results. And that's absolutely not true. And it's not true. Yeah. And one thing Gary Vaynerchuk says all the time, and I've experienced it myself, is all you need is that one view, that one listen, that one person who looks mm-hmm. at your business, looks at what you're doing. And they can change mm-hmm. your business by simply giving you a try, just like the trucking company did when you were yep. looking for your first client. Yeah, exactly. Um, it's funny. Next time you're, you know, it seems like you've already noticed this, but to, to any of your listeners, I mean, go on a page. And if, if, if the fact that it has 1 million likes attracts you, that's fine. It, it, is, it is kind of, you know, um, alluring. Like, ooh, they have so many followers. They must be good. But when you click on check out one of their posts and their post only has, like, one engagement, then that's a little bit of a red flag. It's like uh, maybe they bought these followers or, I don't know, something weird's going on there. Um, yeah, there's a very I, famous uh, – well, I, I wouldn't really call them very famous, but they're a pretty large size um, real estate marketing company. And uh, it's funny because they – built this entire business off of selling agents on building Facebook ads. But if you go to their Facebook page, they have hundreds of thousands of followers. Each post will get one, maybe two likes. And you know, a lot of that stuff is just bought just to really impress a lot of the people that don't understand how it all works. Exactly. And exactly. And uh, I'm going to be starting a company blog pretty soon. And the, what I'm going to pretty much be talking about is like, just like warning, this is what to look for. This is, these are the red flags because, um, there's just so much of it out there right now. It's, it's, it's like sad to see in a way, because especially these companies that are ripping off, there's companies that are ripping off other people's photography and selling, um, cheap crappy stuff made in China. And so you go on, you get really excited. You see a picture of something. Oh my gosh, they have a million followers on Instagram. I'm going to order this. And then it arrives. And basically it was a huge waste of money. And so 
consumerism is like another topic. I mean, people need to stop just like buying everything that they see online. Yeah. But um, in the meantime, this is why it's important to build that trust with your followers. Even if you only have 10 followers, if all 10 of those people trust you and are buying off of you, you're, you're doing better than someone that has 50,000 followers and not one of those steps foot in your store. Yeah. So it's not about the numbers. Stop looking at the numbers. It's about being authentic and telling your story and people will come to you then and they'll latch on to you because they like it and they believe in you and they trust you. And those are the people that are going to stand by your side. Those are the people that aren't going to leave fake negative reviews on your page and, um, you know, nasty comments on your pictures going to be authentic real people that are following you and it's going to make you stronger as a brand yeah and so we keep coming around in circles to the same thing about being authentic and really showcasing yourself and that's what you want to do on Mm -hmm. social media so what's what are some tips on what not to do on social media yeah i mean the biggest one is what not to do is don't try to be that account that's just trying to get so many followers and that's all you care about we've already covered don't spam your followers either um people are interested in your business but it's not all they want to see so just because you got like 50 new likes in a week doesn't give you permission all of a sudden to like do five facebook live videos in a day and then 10 posts the next day It, it just stick to your plan stick to what you're doing try to do honestly one to two posts a day max. Um, now, one to two days or one to two posts per day, is that per social channel or just overall? That would be specifically for Facebook. Um, for Twitter, I'd say go nuts because Twitter is like an amazing little conversation portal that the timeline is just constantly going. So if you were to do like threads, they're called, or five tweets in a row, doesn't matter it's gone in like a minute anyway so twitter it's like get in there get engaged get in conversation um part- participate in conversations that are happening connect with influencers that doesn't really have any limits linkedin definitely has a limit you don't really want to be spamming that at all because not too many po- people post on linkedin anyways um pinterest i mean you could throw up on there as much as you want um, Instagram, I would keep it similar to Facebook, one to two a day. So every channel has its own little flavor and its own little thing going on. Um, but yeah, you do have to be really conscious about like these people, they do want to see what you're up to, but they, it's not all they want to see. And they aren't, they aren't super fascinated by every single little thing that's going on with your business. Try not to spam people. But of course, keep it professional. Um, Depending on your brand, I mean, there's some really saucy brands out there and they can get away with doing like lots of urban language and, and lots of kind of provocative pictures. But if you are, you know, selling life insurance or something like that, like, I don't know, yeah. something more professional realm, try to make sure that you're keeping out of politics and religion and stuff like that and just keep it about what you're doing work wise. Okay. Um, now Mm -hmm. in dealing with a lot of real estate agents here, um, I'm involved with our local association and, and just talking to a lot of the different agents in our association. One of the biggest, um, issues that they have is they don't know what content to put out there. So what's the easy way to, yeah. What's the easy way to hack that? You know, it's a lot of trial and error. You don't just dive in and start posting stuff and it's everything that people like. So as much as I do say be authentic, also pay attention to your analytics. So just try different things. Um, Unfortunately, I mean, something that you should definitely share at your next association meeting is talk about Facebook algorithms. And I keep coming back to Facebook because it's kind of like the number one platform. Um, One thing that isn't going to get you anywhere is posting a lot of text. So if you're just posting a paragraph about what you got up to that day and, and it's kind of just rambling on, you're probably going to get zero engagement. 
because people these days have the attention span of a goldfish. Yeah. Um, if you can't, <laughs> if you can't reel them in like that, with like a saucy little comment or a nice high quality image, you've lost them because there's another video playing right below your post that shows like a chihuahua hula hooping or something like that. Or a so, cat playing the piano. <laughs> Those cat videos, I mean, come on, they're (laughs) still popular after all these years. Um, I would really suggest to those people to concentrate on imagery. If they haven't already thought like that, really put effort into, put the money in hiring a professional photographer or a videographer and get some documentation that looks beautiful about what you're doing. And then just share that with just a simple little caption. That would be my number one advice to all those people. Yeah. And that's really good advice. And um, one thing you said is to constantly look at the data and analyze it. And it's all about testing. You know, that's a, that's really huge because a lot of people will put stuff out there and never even look at any of the data to see if it's working. And so um, many people don't know Facebook has a note section that when you type in a lot of text and you post it, it's similar to like a blog. So I tried yeah. I tried using that as my main source of blog mixed in with everything else from cool. you know property photos, videos, that sort of thing. But I had no attention on that, no likes, nothing compared to everything else. So you're 100% right in that people don't read and the algorithms are not going to push it out to people because, I mean, let's face it, humans are visual. And they like photos, they like video. Um, audio is another big thing. Many people listen to podcasts and that sort of thing, which is another, mm-hmm. which is a reason why I'm doing this podcast. And yeah, yeah, yeah. and and so, uh, no, you're 100 percent right in that. Yeah, yeah. As much as we are going into this age where digital media, there's so much going on. There's still that human interaction that people love: the sound of your voice, the sight of faces. I mean, when I post a picture with people in it as opposed to things like scenery or trucks or houses the engagement that a picture with people in it gets and and real right not just like a stock image that i found online it's insane the difference um if we i'm and there's one page i manage we only have 200 and something likes on the page but the engagement is always double what the likes are on the page and that means that every single person that's li- that has liked the page is interested in what we're putting up. And when I put up a picture of the, p- the people behind the scenes, like the business owner or the colleagues, that's when we get this huge engagement. So, yeah, it, it's if, if you're doing something, like what you were trying to do with those notes is um, it's awesome. What I would suggest you do is take those notes and put them on a company blog because what what you're doing with those notes is I, I think you were assessing maybe a problem and giving answers and solutions to a problem you saw in your industry, but no one's going to go on Facebook and Google um, not like how to find a property manager. Correct. They're going to go in Google. And so the keywords and like the SEO and stuff like that isn't going to search inside your notes in Facebook. So it sounds like you have some good stuff in there. It's just that no one's able to really find it. I always call social media like an online party. And it's like, I'm having a party here. And then you figure out ways to invite people to that party. And the party's always going. The party's always on your Facebook page. But unfortunately, in those notes, there's no way to invite people to that party. They would have to just kind of stumble across it themselves. Yeah. It'd be like a really, you know, high-end like secret events in New York with like the black door and no sign over it. That's like your Facebook notes or a stalker. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's a whole other episode too. Oh <laughs> gosh. Stalking online. Um, but yeah, you want to, you want to stick to you, you. This is why it's important to hire an agency or social media manager because they understand the algorithms. They understand what's happening on each platform and they understand how to take whatever information it is that you give them and where to put it so that people find it. And if I hire a media company like yours, I don't have to worry about it Mm -hmm. as a business owner. I mean, I have to worry about it to a certain extent, but you know, Mm -hmm. maybe getting you some content, that sort of thing, but everything else you worry about. But 
you wouldn't even really have to worry about it because you, if you have the right agency, they would be sending, sending you, okay, we need exactly this. And okay. then at that point, how much thought process do you even need to put into it? Oh, okay. You go do it. You email it over, take a picture of that house, email it over. They are the ones that work with it. They're the ones that decide where to promote it. They're the ones that decide how to caption it. They're the ones that decide when to post it and where and all that sort of stuff. So I really, I truly believe that if you have the right digital media agency, you shouldn't have to worry about it at all because I know that's how my clients feel. And so I hope that's how other people feel with their agencies. Okay. Now, um, we're getting mm. short on time, It's um, but no! I, I've, <laughs> I've got one final question for you, okay? Captioning. Okay. How important is captioning? It's still important. It's not super important, and you want to know why it's not super important, is because the future of social media and posting is going towards video. So pretty soon, you're not going to have to worry about typing in a caption. You're going to be editing videos. And within those videos are going to be a little caption for each screen. So honestly, I wouldn't, this is advice to everyone out there. Don't get super caught up on what you're doing right now, because I really truly believe that the future of social media is going to be live video. So you're going to be, you're going to be speaking to the camera. You're not even going to be after coming up with anything cute or funny to say. You're just going to be telling your story live. It's like reality TV, but there you go. You don't even need producers. You don't even need someone to fund it. You just tap on your Facebook Live. It's free. It's happening right now. It's like your own infomercial. Yeah. Free. Then, yeah, and then um, YouTube videos, vlogging, all that. Um, Facebook is working on AI. And, and, I, and I know um, Facebook puts some emphasis on closed captions, which is why they want you to upload a specific, um, I think it's called a CRT file. And they're able to um, download those keywords from those closed captions. And that's another mm -hmm. kind of uh, ninja marketing way to SEO your video to the top. Exactly. Facebook is really concerned about if you are on your page, they want to make sure you're seeing stuff that's relevant to you. They want to make sure that like, I mean, picture it. If you go on Google and you Google something and the, what you're trying to search isn't coming up, you're probably going to go to another search engine. So it's kind of Facebook thinking of it the same way. You're on your Facebook page. We want to make sure you're seeing stuff that you're really into and you're really, re and really relevant to you. Otherwise you're going to hop on over to Snapchat or LinkedIn or something where they're doing better than us and you're not going to be spending any more time on Facebook. I mean, I know I've talked about Facebook a lot in this interview, but it's because they are seriously paving the way for social media and social media marketing. And um, they are, and they're going to add another it's, it's billion users very soon. They have those yep. drones that are flying over that are um, putting out internet and Wi-Fi to various towns mm -hmm. and cities and, um, that's their mission. They're going to add another billion users. And when you start having all these different people on Facebook, it, it just becomes a dominant platform, like you said. And that's somewhere where you just have to be. Now, unless, of course, your business focuses on millennials, then you want to be on the platforms millennials are using. And depending on the age group, you're probably looking at Snapchat. Yeah. And you can be on more than one platform for sure. It, you don't ever have to choose between one or the other, um, but you, yeah, you want to make sure, okay, am I looking, am I spending enough time on this platform if that's where my audience is? Snapchat's another story because, I mean, Instagram came out with Instagram Live, and so now you have your pictures posted in one and your Instagram Live video, so I don't know. That Instagram Live is now quite the competitors to Snapchat. I mean, me, myself, I haven't even gone on Snapchat in a week. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Well, um, I want it, it's changing every day, Mark. It's changing every day. So there's really no keeping up. But. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's what makes this, that's what makes business. And I'm sure your business very interesting and fun is that it's constantly changing. There's so many new things to mm -hmm. learn all the time and so many new strategies. And, 
And a lot of the strategies are still the same. It's just changing the platform that you're using it on and yeah. adapting the content for that platform. Exactly. I mean, marketing's been around for thousands and thousands of years. Even back when medieval times in England, when one lord and his army took over a castle, they'd flop that banner over the side and have their family crest, and the family crest would show a story, tell a little bit of a story about them. We're still doing the same things. We get so marketing is not going away. It's just that every day is changing the way that you should be marketing your business. And especially digital media, we are still pioneering this, this industry too. It just started. It's going to be around for a long time. So we are, still, we are like the gold rush pioneers. Of it, so it's really exciting. It's really exciting. It is. As you can tell, I'm excited. Yeah. <laughs> well, so. I wish you the best in your business, and thank you so much thank for uh, coming on to the podcast. And we'll definitely be in touch. I definitely want to talk to you more about Pinterest um, and yeah. various other marketing uh, techniques. So again, thank mm-hmm. you. Enjoy that bottle of wine. I will have to try a Canadian <laughs> wine sometimes very soon, um, and. Yeah, I mean, uh, if you're ever in the Bay Area, uh, let us know and uh, come by and visit our offices and uh, we can even go wine tasting. (laughs) Yes, we'll do some wine tasting and we'll do a separate podcast just based on our wine tasting adventure. It'll be amazing. There we go. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Thank you so much, Mark. I had a really fun time talking to you. Same here. Bye. All right. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for listening to the podcast. What an amazing story. Thank you to Melody Mills for coming on to the podcast, being a part of this. I'm excited to try Canadian wine. I'm actually already looking online for uh, the wine she mentioned. Um, I definitely want to try this. And thank you to the producer, Sam Lemon for doing a phenomenal job on the podcast. And everyone, please, all the links are in the description for Melody's website. If you're a small business and You want to consult with her, hire her company to handle your social media so that you're completely hands off. Definitely click on the link in the description and go visit uh, her page. And thank you so much again for listening to the podcast. I mean, just the number of people that are listening and providing feedback is just amazing to me. And so please like, comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. You can catch the podcast on iTunes. SoundCloud, Facebook, YouTube, everywhere where you might listen to a podcast. And very soon we will be on iHeartRadio. Again, thank you. Subscribe. And we have a phenomenal list of people coming up on the show. I really, really want to thank all of you for listening. It means the world to me and I hope today's episode provides you value in your day-to-day life. I created this podcast to help showcase the many great people that live in this world and help share some knowledge that I've learned along the way in life. Again, thank you for listening. Check out our sponsors, and I'll catch you on the next episode.